And we are not doing grammar, like I said, so we're going to just start off with the binder. Now, I just, before we get too far into that, um, in May last month, you guys finished your report on Marco Polo, and that was more of academic writing. So that was more like a report about a person. And so what sometimes we call that like a bibliography um, when... Uh, no, not a bibliography, a biography. <laughs> I was like, that didn't sound right. Bibliography is something completely different. But a biography of somebody is is telling their history, like where they were born and what they were famous for. And so that's kind of what you did with the Marco Polo report. But now we're going to move into something more creative. Do you guys like writing creative stories? I know Christian does. Uh, and you do too. Good, Allie. What'd you say, Christian? Report, you have to be specific. You can't really make up your own things. Yeah. And I know, I, I remember when we did that before and you wrote a really interesting story. Yeah. So I know you enjoy that. <laughs> Try to not make it gory though. I will say that up front because I know sometimes you like to go that direction. So we'll, we'll yeah. try to make it not quite so gory, but you can use your imagination in these stories. So this will be kind of fun. Um, all right, so now in your binder, let's go ahead and take out some pages there that'll be new for you. Um, you're going to go to the source text tab like we usually do, and it's going to be on page 107 is what you should see first here. Let me get to it so you can see what it looks like. It looks like this. And oops, you can't really see that. Hold on a second. My light is being weird. There we go. Um, it'll say week 13 at the top and it'll say camel intent. I know it sounds weird, but that's what it is. So you'll see some pictures. You need this page, 107. You also need page 109, which is kind of like a light yellow color or tan maybe. And then you need the checklist, which is on page 111. So just those three pages, 107, 109, and 111. One, I'm still looking for that first one. Actually, I take that back. We need one more page, this yellow page, 150. Okay. I just found yeah. that. <laughs> so we need four pages after it's all. I forgot about one that. I found. Okay, so it should be the pages right before that. Two, so four pages all together. That one. I have my allergies. Camel intent. Are you looking for uh, your binder, Allie? Is, do we use the band word this? No. Okay. Um, right? Yeah, you do need that. So let me show you again, Christian. It's this page with the camels, the camel, yeah. That one, and then you do need this band words list. This is the light colored one. So yes, you need that. And then the checklist, page 111. And, and then the yellow one. The yellow one. Yep, those four pages. I'm good. And don't I forget to close your rings after you get those out. We're close. Okay, good. Oh my gosh, my mom forgot a pencil. I forgot to get my pencil. Oh, you better grab that. You'll need I just that. found one lying on the floor. Oh, <laughs> that was lucky. <laughs> okay, so Allie, it looks like you got your binder now. So it's this one, page one, um, 107, 107. Need this one, and then you need page 109 which is kind of like a light yellow color. And then you need page 111, which is the checklist. That one, the checklist 111. And then the last one is the yellow page that looks like this. So four pages all together. Okay, so 
before we get too far into these pages, keep them next to you because we're going to go into that in, in just a minute. I do want to talk to you about the who, which clause. Now I'm going to show you um, on a piece of paper here. In fact, I do want you to go ahead and get out a clean lined piece of paper because this will be class notes. You know, sometimes we take notes together about different things. Um, so let's start with a clean sheet of paper here. But keep those four pages close by because we will start that soon too. All right, you know what to do. Go ahead and label your paper with your name here. And today is actually June 5th. And we're just gonna call this class notes. Now, um, I like to teach you how to take class notes. I mean, normally you're just copying my notes for now. But once you get into upper grades and into like high school, especially, I know that's a ways away for you guys, but junior high and high school, um, it's a good habit to always have either a notebook or a clean line piece of paper with you when your teacher is talking, because a lot of times they, they say something that's really important and you want to remember it. So if you write it down on a note, that's going to help you remember it later. So this is good practice. So I just like to show you. And right now, like I said, you're just copying me and that's okay. Eventually you'll get into this habit and write down things that are important. So it helps you. All right. We're going to talk about the who, which clause again today. I know you guys know how to use those and you know what they are, but I want to give you an example of how to fix one because sometimes uh, lots of students misuse a who or a which clause, and there's a way to kind of check to make sure it's good. Uh, so go ahead on the side here. You can skip a line, and then we'll just put who slash which clause. Because so we're going to talk about that first. And then I'm going to give you an example. Thinking back on the story or the article about Marco Polo, remember how it talked about his travels and his travels were difficult. Like he, the travels were to China were long and some people died. And then remember they had a problem with pirates at one point on the ship. And so it, and it was just a lot of people got sick or, you know, there's a lot of things that happened. So the travel was really long and hard, even though, some of it was by boat, but some of it was on land and they walked, basically. So one of the sentences that a student could use from that article is the travel home, which was hard. So I'm this is incorrect, but I just want you to copy this so you know how to fix it. Okay, so let's just say the travel home, which was hard. And when we say hard, we mean difficult, right? Go ahead, Christian. I was going to say what is correct about this, what is incorrect about this sentence. Okay, go for it. Tell me what's incorrect. The travel home, which was hard. You need to add more to that sentence about the travel. Yes, the travel very good. travel home, which was hard was on something 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 was you're on, on the right track and ocean okay the travel home which was hard was on land or land and ocean okay good something like that so you know that all sentences we learned this in grammar all sentences must have a noun and a verb, right? They To make a complete sentence, they need to have like a subject and a verb. That's that's a better way to put it. And so like here, um, the subject is the travel, right? That's, that's what they're talking about here, the travel home. Um, but then we have a which clause. Now, in a which clause, you also have to have a verb. That's one of the rules for clauses. We learned that in our grammar part of class. 
So this word was is a verb. It's a helping verb, but it's connected here with the word which. So what I want you to do is, is just underline which, and then I want you to put a little arrow like that because that means they're connected. So that is a clause that already has a verb. So that takes away the verb from the whole sentence. So you're right, Christian, when you read it, it sounds like it's missing something, right? The travel home, which was hard, and you feel like you're hanging there like, okay, what else about it? Because you're missing something. So that is true. You need another verb in that sentence. So this alone is incorrect. So what you need to do is think of another verb to use. And, and Christian gave a really great example. You use the verb was again. Maybe we can think of a different verb. Maybe we could say something like um, it took two years. Like what if we said the travel home, which was hard, took two years, right? That's how long it took him to get back home. And that word took becomes the next verb in the sentence. So what we would, do you like that one, Christian? Or do you have another one you want to use? I just thought of another one. The travel okay. home, which was hard, went over land and sea. Yes, I like that one. Let's use that. So another rule about a which clause is you got to have your commas around it, right? So let's put in a comma after home and we're going to change that period into a comma, right? So now we have room to keep going because we have the travel home comma, which was hard. And then tell me the rest of the sentence you gave right now. Was hard, went over land and sea. Let's add that. Went over land and sea, period. So let me ask Allie. I know, Christian, I know you th you know the answer to this, so try not to say it, okay? Af um, I know she's still writing, but look at the whole sentence here. What is the second verb now that we've added? Which one of these is the verb here, Allie? The action. Um, over. Close. It's right before that. Went. Went. So went is actually a verb. And it's talking about what they did during the travel, because the travel now is the subject, right? The travel home, which was hard, went over land and sea. So now you have a second verb. Now that sounds better. Do you see how it kind of flows a little better when you add that? So just keep that in mind when you're using your checklist to write your stories and you really want to add a who, which slot clause to a sentence. Make sure that you have two verbs, one that's connected with the which clause or the who clause, and then another verb after that. That will make it flow better, okay? So I want you to put, um, let's see, let's put it underneath this sentence. Let's just put, make sure there are two verbs. And we'll just put an exclamation point. That's a little note to remind you when you're going to write your stories and you using your checklist and you're like coming to the part where you have to add a who, which clause, you can look back on these notes and go, oh yeah, I need to make sure there's two verbs in the sentence. And then you got to make sure those commas are there around the which clause. Okay. Another way to fix it would be to take out the which and, and you do that on a different sentence, because if you have the travel home was hard by itself, that's a complete sentence that would work. And maybe you find a different sentence to use your who, which clause. So there's lots of things you can do to fix it. Um, okay, so I wanted to make sure to show you that. Now, go ahead and set your class notes aside for a minute, because we're done with that for the moment. And now I do want you to look at page 107. Notice this is really different. We haven't had anything quite like this. Usually we have like Marco Polo has like two or three pages of 
sentences and paragraphs and it's an article, right? So this is going to be pretty fun. We're only looking at pictures and there's a format that we're going to follow on how to write about these pictures. So you can probably already see that you it looks like a keyword outline here on the side of the pictures. You see the Roman numeral one, and then you see the words central fact, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Hold on, Christian. And then you got one through five, and then you got your clencher rule, and then you see Roman numeral two and Roman numeral three. So what you're going to work on is a three paragraph story that you make up with pictures. Okay, Christian, did you have a question? I was going to ask if like you write based off of what the pictures are. Yes, and I'm going to show you how to do that. There's some things you can do to help you get creative on that. So, you know how up until now um we've been reading stuff and then we pull stuff from what we read to rewrite it. But now we're going to have to pull stuff out of our head. Right. We're going to have to think about what do you think is happening? And your story, Christian, is going to be completely different than Allie's story because she'll have a different take on it, depending on her personality and your personality, Christian, and just what comes to mind when you're looking at these pictures. But there's everything you need in order to write these stories is actually already in your head. You just have to access it. Right. It's there, but you have to access it. And the best way to do that is to ask yourself some questions. And I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes when I'm doing something, like earlier today, I was in the garage and I was cleaning this, this box uh, on a shelf. You know, I was open the box. And I don't know about you, but when I'm doing something, a lot of times in my head, I'm asking myself some questions like, where did that come from? And, and why do I still have this? And I thought I threw that away. I wonder why it's still in the box. So I'm still... I'm inside my head, I'm asking questions that's called thinking. So you guys do it naturally all the time. You probably don't even realize you're doing it, but that's what you're doing when you're uh, in the middle of working on something or especially when you're writing a story from your own head. So thinking involves questions. Remember that, okay? So asking questions to yourself about something causes you to think. A lot of times teachers don't really take the time to think about or to teach about thinking because, you know, it's natural that we think all the time, but now you know what it means to think is to ask yourself questions. Okay. Now, before we get too far into that again, I do want to, I want to do one more uh, page of notes. This is going to be a new page because I'm going to leave that other page in case we want to add anything to that. So one more lined piece of paper for this part. So if I'm going too fast or you have any questions, just raise your hand like Christian did. And, and um, it's just the three of us today. So we got lots of time to talk about stuff if you need to. Another piece of paper, we're going to label it again, June 5th. And this is a new unit for you. So I want you to skip a line and we're gonna put unit five. And that is writing from pictures. Okay, now you remember how um, when we did the story sequence chart, do you guys remember when we were working on that? The story sequence, Christian gives me a thumbs up. Uh, Christian, what was that? Let's just think back for a second. What was the first thing that we wrote about with story sequence chart? You know, Roman numeral one, what did we introduce at the beginning? You remember? Like you draw a line through and a line through there. I yeah. Draw a T. Yes. And what and kind of things did we put in that first box? Characters. And problem, or maybe the problems in the second box. Right? Characters, you're right about characters. That's in the first box. It was characters and setting. Remember that? Right. That was like where they were and what they were, or where they were and when was the story taking place. And who they were. And who. 
That's right. That's the character. So like, I think I gave the example like Who Panda. Remember when we talked about that? Where? Yeah. And we answered some questions for that. Do you remember in the story sequence chart, Allie, what we did in the box under the characters, that middle box? Do you remember what we wrote about as far as what part of the story? Um, the main idea. Main idea. Yeah, that's pretty close. But think back when we talked about um, Kung Fu, Kung Fu Panda. I almost said Kung Fu. <laughs> that's not it. Kung Fu Panda. I remember we introduced all the characters, like all the, the team of, of the fighters, you know, Tigress and the praying mantis and all those guys. And then in the middle of the story, there was a problem, right? You remember we talked about that? So what was the problem is one word, but I guess I already gave it away. It was conflict and problem. You remember that part, Allie? Yeah. So there's always something the character has an issue with or some problem that they're trying to fix. So that's usually in the middle. And then Ali, how about at the very end, like that last paragraph? Do you remember what we talked about in the story? So we introduce the characters and setting, and then there's the problem and the conflict. What did we end the story with? Do you remember? Um. The, the, the conclusion yes the conclusion that's true and what how about christian maybe you can help her with that one what um what element of the story did we talk about at the end as far as the sequence the solution yes the solution so remember there's a problem and then how the problem was solved good job guys so like in kung fu panda po the main character learned how to do the wushu finger something trick. Remember, it was like, it went skadoosh. And then he he defeated the enemy at that point of the movie. So he solved the problem, right? Okay, so this is a little bit different. We are gonna set it up similar. So I do want you to go ahead and do like we did before and draw a line down the middle of your paper, part way down, about like that. It does not have to be perfect. You can even tell mine's not perfect. I'm not even really in the middle of my paper, but it's okay. These are just notes. And you probably remember this from the story sequence chart on the right side of this. We're going to start writing the outline. And this time we're going to go to five. One, two, three, four, five, like that. And then after five, I'm gonna put that word clincher. And you probably can already guess we're gonna do that for Roman numeral two and Roman numeral three. You guys are good at setting this up. So what I'm gonna do is just skip a line and we'll just fill in this whole thing here. So Roman numeral two, one, two. I'll just do it quickly, but I'll wait for you guys. I got to make my line longer because I'm going to keep going here. Now, before you draw the line sideways, Christian, wait for me, okay? Because we're going to do, we're going to build this a little bit different. So just set this part up and then wait. Did you already get it done, Allie? Awesome. Oh, good. You guys are both good. Okay. So you can tell this is going to be three paragraphs because each one of these Roman numerals represents a paragraph. We're going to review clincher in just a minute. But instead of drawing lines this way like we did before, I'm just going to have you draw a box. And it does not have to be perfect, so don't worry about that. Draw a box next to each one of these Roman numeral outlines like that. You can probably already guess that these boxes represent pictures that you're gonna look at. And each picture is gonna have its own set of keywords for the paragraph. Okay, so that's why we use boxes instead of those lines. Now, um, 
you're going to also notice and you can put this, by the way, we're not going to actually write on this outline. We have one already set up for us, but this is just more your notes for this unit. But next to Roman numeral one, I want you to write the word central fact. And go ahead and do that next to Roman numeral two, central fact, and three. Central fact means what you actually see in the picture. So let's pretend for a second you're looking at a picture of a guy in a boat, okay, in the water somewhere. And he's just sitting, maybe it's a fishing boat and maybe it's a lake, but he's just sitting there in a boat with a hat on and that's all you see in the picture. So your central fact would be a guy sitting in a boat right? Remember the rules for the outline are still the same where you have three keywords per line. So per number, you have only three keywords, but you can still use symbols and numbers and abbreviations for free. You don't have to count those, but the rules of the outline itself are still the same. So central fact of the picture I just described could be guy, boat, water, right? What if it's a picture of a, a car on fire? That would not be good, right? But let's say, uh, what are some keywords you could put if you see a picture of a car on fire? Christian, what would you put for your keywords? Car. Um, a picture of oil leaking. Okay, that might be in the picture. Fire. So you could use car, fire, and maybe like danger or car, fire, problem. We're going to pretend nobody's in the car. So we can, you know, maybe the car suddenly just. Is somebody in fire. the car. No, there's no one in the car. <laughs> it's empty. But we just see the car itself on fire. So we're like, uh oh, that's dangerous, right? So that could be your three key words there for that picture. What if you saw a picture of a, a puppy at the pet store? What are three words if you looked at a picture and it said pet store at the top and you see a cute little puppy and he's wagging his tail and he's like going, you know, in the window of the store. So what are, what are three uh, central facts, Allie, that you would put for that? I'm going to ask Allie this one. Um, <clears throat> draw like a puppy, like a little dog. Uh huh. And then, so um, I'm I'm asking about like that. What words? If this, the, we'll pretend right here. There's a picture of a a pet store, and there's a puppy inside. What is the central fact? So, what three words could you put oh. to describe what you see in the picture? Puppy for sale. Puppy for sale. Perfect. That's exactly right. So you get the idea. The central fact is actually what's in the picture. Now, beyond that, at the, let's see, let's turn this page over because I want you to write a, a little bit more on this page here. So turn your note page to the back side. And here's where we're going to put a list of questions. Now, remember, to access what's already in your brain, you need to ask yourself some questions like, oh, let's see, Christian, do you know what the big six questions are? Okay. Who? Yes. Where? Yes. In? What? You're close, and yes. Who, when, where, I don't You're close. Know I can remember. Let's do who, this is the order that kind of flows. Who, what, where, 
And then over here, let's put when, why, you forgot that one, and how. So five of them start with a W and one of them starts with an H. But those are the big six. Those are the big six questions. Who, what, where, when, why, how? Were you going to say something else, Christian? No. Okay. So when you're looking at a picture, you're going to ask yourself some of these questions. This will help you fill in your outline when you ask questions like that. Another set of questions, I'm just going to draw, I'm going to skip a line and draw, trace it like that. Okay. Another set of questions you're going to ask is what happens, oops, before what you see in the picture? What happens after what you see in the picture or outside the picture or what's invisible? Sometimes we can create scenarios in our head or situations in our head that really aren't there. Like, let's go back to the guy in the boat. Maybe there's a submarine under the water. You can't see it in the picture, but you could create that in your head that, uh oh, there's a submarine right underneath the boat. It might make him topple over or something. Or maybe there's a shark or maybe there's a, a swimmer there trying to make it to the shore and he needs help or something like that. You know, it could be anything you can think of. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the picture. It does need to be related to the picture. So you wouldn't have a picture of a guy in a boat on the water and then suddenly talk about, you know, space mountain ride at Disneyland because that doesn't match. Right. So you want to keep to, more of what's happening in the picture, but you can create things that are invisible that you don't see. Uh, go ahead, Christian. I have a good outline for the thing. Guy, boat, water, kraken. Oh, the kraken. Yes. That's from Pirates of the Caribbean. I remember that. Um, okay. So good example. And then even outside of the picture, like if you're looking at a picture and you know how it has a box around it, maybe something's just outside of what you can see. Maybe just outside there's like a storm coming with lightning and rain and, you know, that you can't see in the picture, but it's coming. It's right outside. That's what that means. Like what's outside of the picture or what happened after what you see in the picture or what happened before what you see in the picture. So these are all really good questions to ask yourself to get your creative juices going to create these stories. Now there's one more set of questions. I'm going to do how you do one more line here. Just three things. I want you to write think and say and do. You might remember those three from the story sequence chart. What is the character? Is it, you know, an animal or a person? What are they thinking? What are they saying? And what are they doing? Um, those all go with the question, what? Like, what are they? I'm going to put little stars here. What are they thinking? What are they saying? What are they doing? That, that goes with what? Okay, now that you got these questions in your head about how to go about asking yourself these questions to write this story, let's look back again on page 107. We're gonna do this one together. And then we'll talk about it. Okay, so. Now, yours probably will be different, like I said earlier, because you both have different personalities and you both have different styles of writing. And that's great. I love that, that you are both so different. So, but for this example, we're going to kind of work together to come up with an outline together. Okay. Because this is your first time doing this. But the thing I want to remind you, because I already know Christian's thinking, but I want to write my own version of the story. And guess what? You can. You can for your homework. You can write your own version of the story. 
But for class, we're going to do this part together. And you could even, if you wanted to, come up with your own um, ideas of, of the situation that's separate than what we decide on for class. Christian? Would I be allowed to draw on the picture to change it entirely? Not yet. There will be a time coming soon where the boxes are going to be blank and you get to draw your pictures. But for this lesson, we're going to keep it just like this. Okay. So we have this to practice with. Good question. Yeah. So remember the central fact means what's really happening in the picture. So I'm going to start with Allie. I just want you to take a minute to look at that first picture on this page. And can you give me you could you don't have to narrow it down to three words, but tell me in your own words what you see in that first picture, Allie. Um, it looks like they're like it looks like a tent behind them. Yeah. And I forgot what those animals are called. This um, is a camel, actually. It's hard to see because you can't see the hump too much because it's not really standing up in these pictures. But that's a camel. Okay. So yes, a tent, a camel. What else do you see? And then a guy that looks like scared. Yeah, a guy that looks scared. Very good. What is the um well we'll talk more about that in a minute, but you're right. Start with what you literally see in the picture. So we see a camel. Go ahead and write this in on yours. We see a camel. And then you said a guy. I'm thinking for, because this is a story, we probably need to give the guy a name. So this is where you guys can pick your own name for your guy. Do you have an idea of a name, Allie, for your character here? A boy name? You can make it up. Um, Ian. Ian. Okay. I-A-N. That's how I spell Ian. Okay. So there you go. And Christian, what's your guy's name going to be? Man in the Iron Mask. Even though he doesn't have an iron mask. <laughs> well, let's think of a name name, though, to start. Because your character is going to... You, you don't want to keep saying Man in the Iron Mask throughout the whole story. So let's yeah. give him a name. What do you think? And you can change it later if you want. James is all I can think of. James, that'll work. Okay, so you can put James on yours. And then we see a tent. Wait, no. I think that's better. It's Spanish. It's a ah. Mexican name. Okay. That's cool. So we got camel and then whatever name you pick and then tent. So remember, the central fact is literally what you see. So um, that that goes next to Roman numeral one. And then we go on to the other facts that we think of as you're looking at this picture. So this is where those questions are going to come in handy. So let's think for a minute. I'm going to start with um, Christian. So regular number one. Um, why? So look at how the camel is sticking his head through the tent, right? Why do you think he's sticking his head in the tent, Christian? Let's see. Because he's an assert, so he's, what's the word? He's, and there's more than one answer, you know, it's just something that you make up. So why, why do you so think? So he's like a shark. He smelled blood inside the tent and he came Hey, 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 we're not going into gore this time. Okay, we're done with that. No more blood, no more guts, no more gore. Okay. okay. So a camel sticking his head inside the tent because it's hot outside and he wants to get shaved. Okay, good. I like that. So it's hot outside and he's looking for some shade. So she, he wants to go inside the tent. And then I'm thinking, because I know that you guys really want to write your own version here. I want to know what Allie thinks. What, why do you think he's putting his head in the tent, Allie? Um, for Ian to give him attention. Okay, I like that. So I'm going to see if you guys can both just come up with your three keywords in your head about why 
he's putting his head in this tent. So for example's sake, I'm going to go with Christians and say, I'm going to say hot, um, want shade, something like that. So he's hot and he wants some shade. So he's putting his head inside the tent, but yours could be something like Allie, you could have something like, um, uh, lonely want attention or something like that, right? You could say lonely want attention. And then that would be your keywords to explain why he's putting his head in the tent. And now another question for the next one down, number two would be, how did he get his nose in the tent? How? Remember, you're thinking about those big six questions that we wrote down in your notes here. And another, another one of the big six questions is how. So how did he stick his nose in the tent, Allie? How did he do that? Um, maybe he like bit a hole through the net. Bit a <laughs> hole through the net? Through the um, tent. Through the tent. I like it. So you could put bit, hole, tent. Those could be your three key words. How about you, Christian? What do you think? How did he do that? He was given powers by a mystical genie and turned small and went through a hole in the net and turned, wait, no, his head turned small. His head went through a hole in the tent and it turned big again. <laughs> okay. So the wizard. Wait, no. We don't have a wizard here, though, so it would have to be just magic somehow. Okay, so camel, the camel finds a hole in the hole. So the guy left the, the door, like the flap of the tent open, and the camel stuck its head through. Okay, you're going to something different. That's fine. So... Um, your guy, what's your guy's name again, Christian? Hadid. It's a Spanish name. Say it one more time. Hadid. Hadid. It's actually spelled J-A-R-I-D because it's... Oh, right. It it's, sounds like, it looks like Jared, but when you say it in Spanish, it's, it's spelled Hadid. Jared. My okay. friend was named Hadid. So okay, Hadid. I know this name. Okay. So you could say... Hared or Hared. No, yes. no. Uh, how, what are your three key words that you're going to put there, Christian? Hared. Um, you do a J with a circle to, so you don't have to count that as a word. Really? Left window open or something like that. Left door open. Okay, good. And then Allie, how about um for number we're on number three now. I'm not gonna write this anymore. You guys are writing your own. So number three, what do you think your character is thinking? He's he's sitting there minding his own business, and all of a sudden he notices this big camel head in his tent. What do you think he's thinking, Allie? Um, he's probably, like, thinking, why is there a camel in my tent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why are you here? You could say, why camel here, question mark, or something like that for your three words for number three. Okay, you get where I'm going with that? I'm going to let you guys do the writing. I'm just going to point here. And then uh, you think of what he's thinking, Christian, for your three words. We're going to kind of move a little faster here so that. I'm so excited. I've always wanted a camel. I need one to go on a trip. Oh, perfect. I love it. So how can you condense that into three key words to help Let's you remember? See. Excited. Okay. Need, maybe, need. Excited, need. A picture of a camel. And then trip. There you go.
I like it. Or I guess you could do even a C with a circle around it to represent camel. Okay, while you're writing that, let's think about another question. For number four, what does the guy do now? Now, okay, so he's got this camel, got his head in there, and there's different reasons why that's happening, but what do you think the guy is gonna do now? For your story, Allie, what do you think? Because he, remember the camel wants attention, right? So what is the guy going to do now? Um, maybe like hide in the corner. Hide in the corner? <laughs> it looks like he did move over a little bit later, huh? Yeah. Do you think he's going to want to give the camel attention? Because look at the camel. He almost looks like he's smiling, huh? He's, he's a yeah. nice camel. He's like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe he could pet him or he could maybe, I know you're looking ahead at the next picture. It looks like he's like, ah, like, oh no, you're squishing me. But um, hiding in the corner is fine too. If you want to stick with that, you could put um, I with a circle around it representing Ian for your guy. You could put I with a circle around it hiding or hide in corner or hiding in corner or something like that. Hiding. Yeah. If you want to go with that or try to pet his nose or said, hi, what are you doing here? Or something like that. <laughs> so you put your words here. Okay. Allie for number four, did you come up with something? When you're done, let me know what you put there. How about you, Christian? What is he going to do now? So he's got his head in there. Let's see. And first your guy, all, your camel camels, wants shade. First of all, camels do not run wild in a desert. They are usually people hanging on to them or riding them. That's true. They're not loose in a desert. This That's one true. doesn't have a saddle or anything connected to it. It's That's true. A, loose camel a loose camel that's a good point so maybe he was he was tied up somewhere and that's an example of what's happening outside of the picture you so, don't see that maybe he got his it got out of the rope it, somehow um try saddle and camel because he tries to saddle the camel because he wants to ride it on a long trip. I wonder if that should be later though, because that doesn't really go with the flow because now he doesn't have a saddle in here. You know what I mean? He's just trying to figure out why are you here and what 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 is, so you're saying after this picture, he's gonna try to saddle the camel? Is that what you're saying, Christian? No, I'll just go with. Maybe that happens later. Hold on to that thought, but for right here, what do you think the guy is going to do next? Like, I know you can see the next picture, but what do you think he wants to do? He wants to call to call the police or and the fire department to see where the owner is. Okay. <laughs> call nine one one where to see where the owner is. That's a good one. You could use 911 and you don't have to count it because no, no, it's call 911 to arrest the camel. <laughs> for barging into his All the camel wanted was some shade, guy. He barged into his home. <laughs> okay, so fill in number four. Now, number five is optional. If you want to keep going with your thought on what you're writing about, then you can put a little bit more on number five about this picture. If you're happy with what you have for one, two, three, and four, you don't have to fill in number five. Does that make sense? It's just there in case you want to use it. Okay. And then you're going to see here, clincher, the clincher rule, repeats or reflects 
two to three key words of central fact. Now, remember the little saying we did before, and it goes like this. Let's do it together. So put your hands like this and say the topic uh, sentence. You say it. Topic and clincher sentence. And clincher Last. sentence. Hold on. Let's do it together, Christian. Hold on. Let me start over. Be or reflect <laughs> two or three key words. Okay. So mute yourself for a second, Christian. You guys stay muted, but you say it with me. So it's not confusing. We're not talking over each other. Okay. All right, go like this and say the topic sentence and the clincher sentence must repeat or reflect two or three key words. You guys remember. Okay, so don't forget that's just there to remind you when you go to write your paragraph to make sure you have those connecting words from your first sentence and your last sentence, okay? And remember that word reflect means a synonym. And a synonym is a word that's almost the same. Like if you use the word hot, well, let's look at back at the top sentence. It's really the top sentence. Let's say the word tent. We could think of another, um, another way to say tent. We could say maybe camping shade or um, fabric cover or something like that to represent tent. So you're not using the same word. That's what it means to reflect. All right, let's move on because I know we're running out of time. So let's start with Christian on this one. What do you think the central fact is for this part? Now, remember, central fact is exactly what you see in the picture. So what do you see there, Christian, for the second picture? I see the camel pushing him into a corner. Okay. And so he's maybe... trying to push the camel back. So we could put camel pushing and then leave a blank here for your name. So like um, Allie would put Ian and Christian would put Har Hared. I don't know how to say it in Spanish. Or you could do the, the symbol and use the word corner or something like that. Um, you know what? And it really should be past tense. So I, I think we should put pushed, put ED here. I put ING, but let's change that to pushed. And in fact, up here for want, let's make that wanted because we really want to keep all of our verbs in the past tense. That's really important because if you start out talking about the past and then you switch to talking, you know, future with ing, then it's it's confusing for the reader. All right, so the camel pushed Ian or the camel pushed Red in the corner. Um, and now asking some more questions. What is the guy doing now, Allie, what is, what is he doing? Or, or let's ask this, how does he feel now? How does he feel in that picture? Um, the camel or the, or the person? The guy. Oh. The person. Um, he, he looks, he looks scared still. He looks scared, maybe a little worried, like, uh-oh. This guy's bigger than I thought, maybe, or um, maybe he's worried. So you could put here Ian or I with a circle around it, um, worried, squished, like he's worried he's going to get squished, maybe, or he's worried um, he's going to sit on him or something like that. So think of how, how the guy feels here for number one. And you do that too, Christian, for yours. And I'm going to go a little bit faster here so we can try to wrap this up. You get the idea though. So you're constantly asking those big six questions as you're filling out your keyword outline here. Okay, so you've got the who, what, where, when, why, how, and then what's happening before, after, what is the guy saying? So this is where you just get to be creative. Another question you could ask um, is, 
how does the camel feel? What do you think about that, Christian? Looking at the camel's expression here, what do you think? How does the camel feel? Looks like it's sleepy. Sleepy. Okay, that's a good one. The camel feels sleepy or content maybe or just kind of tired or happy, something like that. So you can use that for number two, how the camel feels. Thumbs up when you have something for number two. Okay, thanks, Sally. Do you have something, Christian, for number two? Still thinking about what Still to think. write. Okay. I liked your idea of how you felt sleepy. So you could say um, camel or C with a circle around it for, to represent camel. Comfortable, maybe sleepy. It, and if you can only think of two words, that's okay. You don't have to have three, but you can't do more than three. That's the, that's the thing to remember. Okay, so they're probably in the desert, I'm going to guess, because remember how we learned about camels and they live in the Sahara Desert and it's usually really hot and there's not a whole lot of trees there and stuff. So I'm going to ask my next question for number three is going to be, what do you think it smells like in the tent? Now that this camel came in, what do you think it smells like in there? What do you think, Christian? Camels are big and smell like horses. Smell like horses. Okay. So you would kind of be smelling a farm. Yeah, maybe dirt or maybe a little poop, right? Because <laughs> they can be stinky, especially if they're sweaty. Even horses are stinky. Um, so, so you could say something like strong odor, like, or stinky well, odor. Tent smell farm. Tent smell farm. Okay, so it smelled like a farm in there. Yep, you could put that tent. And I would use smelled with an ED because remember, we're keeping our verbs in the past. Yeah, so smelled. It sounds funny. The tent smelled a farm. Yes. Or suddenly inside, that's where you could use an L-Y adverb is suddenly inside the tent, it smelled like a farm. And you could put that, you know, for that sentence. All right, so now I'm going to let you work on this last one for your homework. And since this is a fun, easy story, I want you to go ahead and write your three paragraphs. So there's two things you're going to do for your homework. You're going to finish this one. Remember, you can put a little note here. Let's put what is in the picture. I think I might write the third paragraph if I have time. <laughs> so the central fact means what is in the picture? You start with that and then you think about your questions of what's happening here. Remember, you can use your notes from class that we did today here, but you're gonna put what is in the picture to remind you that that's the central fact and then you're gonna fill out the rest. Now you only have to do four, but if you wanna do five, you can. And then let's just take a peek really quick at the checklist. It's normal, it's what, it's what you normally have. There is something new here though called quality adjective and we ran out of time to include that. So we're gonna talk about that next week. But I do want you to go ahead and write your three paragraphs. Don't worry about the quality adjective. We'll skip that one on your checklist. And then next week, we'll add that to your story. And I'll show you how. Okay, so two things you're doing for homework. Finish this one here, the Roman numeral three, 
outline and write your three paragraphs using your checklist, but don't worry about quality adjective. We'll, we'll add that one later. You guys have any questions about what you're doing this week for homework? No. Nope, you're good? All right, good job. And I will see you again next Monday. It's a different time now. So next Monday at 1130, same place right here. I'll see you next week, okay? Bye. Bye.